Chapter 7, Private Dancer I'm sorry to have to tell you that Samantha isn't really settling down at all, said Miss Lorenzen. Samantha's parents, sitting the other side of her desk, noted on another. Miss Stevens gave her sigh. How do you mean, not settling in? Well, I know she's only been here for weeks, but she hasn't made any friends at all. She avoids all the sports lessons. We virtually had to force her to take up swimming. And as for work, well, the principal consulted Samantha's file on the desk in front of her. Samantha does the very minimum amount of work she can get away with. She spent every evening last week in detention because she won't do her homework. And just these last few days, she taken to cutting glasses altogether. She not been allowed out of school, has it? Asked Mr. Stevens. Only when she's been strictly supervised, as you instructed. I'm not saying she's particularly bad. It's more a form of passive re- resistance. She wants you to expel her, said Mr. Stevens. Oh, Jonah, would mean Miss Stevens. Of course, she does, said Mr. Stevens. Miss Donation. Are you saying you can't handle her? No, 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 Mr. Stevens. We heard a lot was girls here than Samantha. It's just that it is difficult to discipline the girl. She doesn't seem to care if she put into detention. We can stop her outside leave because she doesn't get any. We can't even put a leg V on her allowance because she only gets a few dollars a week. Yes. We do see your difficulty, said Miss Stevens. You know she still hasn't risen to us, has said Mr. Stevens to the principal. Oh dear, I am sorry, said Miss Donison. I ordered her to do so. I even issued her some first class stamps. There's nothing else I can do. I don't see how we can force her to dry natures. Who is she writing to then, said Mr. Stevens. Alex? No. I've spoken to his mother, said Miss Stevens. She's keeping an eye on his meals. We better have a word with her, said Miss Stevens. She what she got to say for herself. Yes, she should be here by now. Ah, said the principal as there came a tap on the door. Come in, she said, and Mary Boswell, the head girl, came into the room. I'm sorry, Miss Nolenson, she said. We looked everywhere. You mean you can't find her? Demanded Miss Nolenson. I'm sorry, no. She must be on the school grounds. I'm sure she is. I had a word with the caretaker and he says no one gone out of the gates this morning, said Mary. I, and I got all the briefs. Looking for the trouble is there are so many places to look. All right then, Mary. Mr. Nishun dismissed her. With an extremely embarrassed expression on her face, she cleared her throat and said, I'm sorry about that, Mr. and Miss Stevens. It's really it's most unusual that we are unable to locate one of our girls. It's not your fault, Miss Donison, said Mr. Stevens, standing up. She just put polishing for sending her away. There was tension of another kind back at Mouse Park School, at least in the home economy's room. Everybody was hurrying, hovering around the big and oven. Even the cooking teacher, Miss Talbot, had a preoccupied expression on her face. The only person who didn't seem concerned was Toby. He was sitting over on the far side of the room, calmly reading a book on cake decoration. Alex was sitting up with swinging his legs. How long now? Alex asked. Eh? Oh, the timer. Well, because I don't know, said Toby absently. I think I might try a table chalice. Good idea, said Alex, who had no idea what his friends was talking about. Any more mail for me? I already told you no, said Toby. Come on, Alex. You had one letter this week, and you seeing her Thursday this morning. Shh. Alex looked her what, round nervously. Keep it down with you. Ah, there's no one listening, 
said Toby. Look, I promised you. If I had a letter, I wouldn't forget to give it to you. It's about the only thing that cheers you up just lately. Oh, Alice unwrapped a piece of chewing gum and put it in his mouth. He handed Toby a piece. I thought I'd been okay the last couple of weeks, he said. You've been better since you've been seeing her mornings, yes, said Toby. But it's the days in between that you go around biting people's head off. You don't know what it's like, Toby, says Alex. Nothing ever goes wrong for you. Nothing ever goes wrong for me, Toby repeated incredulously. What about last week? When my soul failed to rust, I know all about heartache. Believe me, Alex Green inspired of himself. How's the paper route coming on? He asked. I'd rather not talk to it about it, <laughs> said Toby. That immediately is so. You never said anything about the dogs at Holland Cherries. What, Tess? She's as gentle as a lamb. Yeah. Well, he threw the saddle on your back yesterday morning. Oh, wait. Couldn't you be more careful? I am exceedingly sorry. I must try harder. Toby glanced up at his friend. You have remembered that what we are going to see a film on Saturday night? Oh, said Alex. We may have a problem there. A problem? demanded Toby. What do you mean a problem? You said that if I did drop paper root two mornings a week, you pay from the movies and something to eat afterwards. I'm sorry, Toby. I can make such a day. You do realize that we are the only two people left in the western room who haven't seen Cloak and Dexter, demanded Toby. Cloak and Dexter, oh, that thing everybody is talking about, said Alex. Make it another night. Toby, I really have something i got to do. Don't act all mysterious with me, said Toby. You want into the ring? Yeah, well, I've got to do something for Samantha. Look after someone she's been cheating. Toby sighed. You just better mean it about another night, Alex advanced. He said, or I might accidentally drop your newspaper in the to be broke up as the charm of fiery went, making everybody but himself. Reluctantly, he tried John, then after a decent interval stroll across the room. Give me some space, he said. Good night, me shouldering the girls aside. He opened the oven, and Alex helped him slide out of the hill stain, now filled with a beautiful-looking fruit cake. Hmm, looks about right, said Toby uncommittedly. Here, shove this in it, said the better is cool, holding our school door. See if it's done. You brought my cake with that thing. I brought you with it, shuddering Toby. Well, how do you know it's done then? asked Jean Taylor. Toby sighed. I know, he said. He turned to Miss Talbot. Can I leave it here until it's cool or Daniel? He asked. Don't call the me Daniel, said Miss Talbot. Automatic, automatically, trying to be serious. But in fact, the whole school called her Daniel after the television cook. She touched the top of the cake slightly. Yes, of course you can, Toby.